Welcome to the week eight wrap up here at this 13th season of Blood, Sweat and Beers. I thought it only appropriate to ask our new number one to join me here this week. Welcome. Yeah. Appreciate you joining this week. I thought it would be appropriate given uh, the, the statement win that you had this week. I, I just, I felt like you know, I don't always have a, a theme or an idea each week, but that was such a huge game going into it that, you know, hadn't had you on yet this year. So I thought, well, that th this has to be the time to bring you in so that you can, you know, do, if you wanted to do a little brag, if you wanted to do a little, uh, whatever you, you whatever know, you felt better being under the radar than it does now, because now I know, you know, any loss, it's going to start like, I'm going to hear about it, but yeah. that's all right too. Yeah, uh, it was kind of a kind of an interesting thing. How did you feel going into the week? Yeah, like I said, uh, leading up to Thursday, I wasn't feeling great. But then seeing the score Thursday night, I was like, that's a pretty good starting point for me. Yeah. And then, yeah, I just, I mean, I really wasn't overly confident, but definitely the 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 thing about it that's interesting is how big the loss was. <laughs> like, for, you know, the margin was huge. Yeah. Uh, so unfortunately, Don Chris joins uh, Keith as the only two teams to not break a hundred for a week, yeah. which, which is rough. Um, I thought we might have had another one, but you know, got a couple just over a hundred. <clears throat> so that that was pretty significant for him, um, seeing as how he was averaging almost double what he got this week coming in, which which you know is is pretty uh, pretty impressive. So. And of course, that huge difference pushes you into the lead for most points so far through eight through eight weeks. So you kind of bumped ahead. So you got the head-to-head -head win. You got more points. You now become the number one. I know, but you know what's interesting is after that weekend for Light Road Coyote, you're you're only behind him by ten and a half points. Yeah. How does it feel to be back on top? Feels great. I'm ready for my second my second mug. <clears throat> okay, uh, I can understand that. Uh, it, it was kind of interesting that it, it felt like we were talking a lot about Don and and his team, and yet you actually up through last week, you and he both held the number one spot for the same number of weeks. So mm -hmm. first out of the gate, Keith had the number one spot. He just scored the most points the first week. And then weeks two through four, you had the number one spot. And then it wasn't until week five with that big 235 point game that, that he had that he took over for the next few weeks. And now you're, you're back to number one. So as of this week, you've now held the number one spot longer than anybody else. But it felt yeah. like more people were talking about his team. Um, why, why do you think that is? Were you just flying under the radar trying to be? Yeah, I think it's, no, I think. Uh activity in the whatsapp and also him being a newcomer it's like very it's a splash it's like his first time in the league and whoa he's killing it and this guy is this is crazy look at these points he's putting up and it felt very dominant um but i felt really good about my active roster and my bench after a couple of weeks watching i mean the stafford cooper cup thing who knew that was going to be so incredible i mean yeah. and i think i don't even know when i grabbed stafford but I was able to get a lot of depth in this draft and it just played out right. It worked out. So, yeah. so I, anyway, it was kind of interesting, you know, he, Don comes out with a 235 point game, you know, sets the record. And then nobody said anything about you hitting 200, two weeks in a row. I couldn't, I yeah. couldn't believe nobody mentioned it at all. And, and I really noticed it because I was like, what, two and a half tenths of a point from, from you that second week from, from having the top score, but somehow you still so two weeks in a row, um, which is kind of interesting. That means that uh, half the time, half the game so far, four out of the eight games we've played, you've had the highest score wow. in the league. Not, not, not just obviously to win your game. Um, let me throw another stat at you uh, for your team. T tell me if you feel like there's something to this or not, because uh, obviously, score, you've scored the most points in the league. Um, you have had the top score in the, the, in the league for four of the eight weeks we've played. But you also have the fewest points scored against you. 
does that make you nervous at all? Or do you think you, for sure? You know, I'm saying I'm looking at the other. No, no, I'm looking at the teams trending up. I mean, there's any one of these, you know, they, they could put up the same points. I've just been fortunate with who I've squared off. I mean, look at Light Rail Coyote. I mean, Kyler Murray going down, Derrick Henry going down. I mean, that's just incredible, right? That's when one of the top scoring teams and he really put a goose up. So I definitely don't think I'm in vulnerable. I just feel like I do have some depth to sustain it. Like when Clyde Edwards Alaire went down, nothing changed for me. In fact, I got better with fortunately getting a free free, uh, free agent that turned out has been great so far. You know, no, I don't feel like it's going to be an easy road. I think there could be definitely some games I'll drop, but like you mentioned, I have a big enough buffer. Yeah where I can take some hits and losses. The odds are I'll be in there and that's all you want. You get in there and then you see how, what happens. Yeah. So you got any strategy for the second half of the season? You're just going to keep riding this out as long as these guys are putting up points. Uh, No, I got to start thinking trades for sure. And figuring out if I can shake it up a little bit and try to get some pieces that maybe not benefit other players. Like maybe other teams is not going to help them win now and they need to win now, but maybe I can, when get some good guys to help later when the playoffs kick in. So that's what I was looking at even tonight before this call. Like definitely it's time to start trading. I think everybody needs to, but there's some real hurt teams right now that could use some guys. Why do you think our league has such a low, uh, a, 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 a small trade history? Like there's not a lot of movement. What do you think that is? I, I feel like, um, there, there's a generally a very conservative attitude and not only with trades, I think just in general, Joe's about the only one who's willing to just take a flyer and be like, let's just do it. So uh, any, any opinions about how it's going to look shaken out? It was kind of interesting because, you know, there were some projections, you know, you, you look at the ESPN's final standing projection and, and it doesn't always match up with what we're looking at at the time. And we mm-hmm. had a couple of teams do well in the beginning, like Joey was three and one and, and has now lost four straight. Um, you know, I, I was like one in what, one in five or one in four or whatever. And, you know, now our division's crazy. You're, you're sitting there with a four game lead and everybody else is at three and five. Yeah. Any, any, uh, you got any predictions for who shakes out of that? I don't know about predictions, but as far as looking at the trends and what's coming up, like I mentioned, I feel like your team is hitting at the right time and you have some players on the bench that make your team better, like a McLaurin. So you had a strong week, even with some really good players on the bench, Tom Brady sit on the bench. I mean, so yeah, I feel like you're going to only get stronger and remain that way, barring injury, but, and your schedule is decent, you know, cause you just mentioned kittens mittens. I'd <laughs> <laughs> I think that kittens, yeah, I got some, we got declawed. Uh, so you definitely have a good road. And even Barrel Scraper actually looks kind of interesting. What do you think about um, about Ian's team? I mean, I, you know, obviously he's the he's sitting there at, at, in the third spot by himself. He's got this, he's got the standing, but I don't, I mean, with the, I don't think his team looks really strong. I was looking at that. Like he could start dropping some now. Not to be rude, Ian, sorry. I mean, he's got eh, – it, it could be close. He's not trending the right way, but he's not, he's got Reed next week, which is going to be tough. Barrel Scraper will be tough. Kittens Mittens may not be tough. And he's got you, which will be tough. And then, unfortunately, he's got Hold My Beer, which is the, the <laughs> resident. Just the bad the boy. Yeah. Yeah, him and Keith, yeah. All right. Well, thank you for your time.